I received a question about how you can get weight reported on a drawing. Let's get into it now. Here I've got a gearbox cover and we want to implement it into a drawing. So we'll go ahead and send to and make drawing of this design. And we're going to go ahead and go with whatever template we'd like. I think that this is the custom template I'll go with. But how do we handle weight? Well, since there isn't a property specifically dedicated to weight, we'll handle weight in a slightly different way. Now, since this is an individual part, we really don't need a bill of materials, right? Because we have our title block that gives us all the information we need. But the bill of materials will come in handy for the weight. And so what I'll do is I'll go to Sheets and Views and Bill of Materials. You can use a custom template or save a custom template from this if you'd like, but assuming you don't have a custom template for <laughs> doing weights and parts, I'll go ahead and say OK for the standard template. Now I can double click on this to modify it, and I'll go to Add Column, and this also allows me to delete columns as well. So we'll click on the X to delete all of the columns out of my build of materials. And as we scroll to the bottom, we can see that we have weight right here. So I'll put in weight. And that gives me the weight as the bill of materials, and I can exit out of this. And now I can move this weight wherever I'd like. So when we do weights, uh, since there isn't a property that pre-programs for weights, like some of the other properties we have for drawing templates, we would handle weight um, more on the part level when we're making the drawing and simply insert the weight here. Now, we may want to change things, right? We may want to go to material and say, uh, I want this to be uh, maybe a copper alloy, right? We'll save that. Uh, with a new material and we come over here so 1651 that's the weight that we just had so what we will do is we'll go to our drawing and click on this reproject views of course, we'll have to save first. And we'll reproject the views. And OK. Now that everything is updated, you can see that our weight has changed with this new copper alloy. So we have something that as we change our part, <clears throat> as we change the properties and the geometry, this weight does update uh, when we refresh all of our views. So we have an updating uh, weight parameter. You may find yourself in a situation like this with an assembly, and that might give us a few choices. The first one that we have to make is, do we want to see the weight of every individual component in the assembly or just a total weight of the entire assembly? Uh, I recommend doing the weight of every individual component as that's the most straightforward. And of course, what we would do is send to make drawing And after we start our drawing, we can do exactly as we have done before and be able to insert our bill of materials. Now, of course, if we actually have a, an assembly that uses real materials, we may want to open our bill of materials and instead of deleting everything, simply add a column. But the beautiful thing is you can make it exactly how you would like. In this case, we'll add a column for weight at the very end and close. And there we have all of our weights, as easy as that. If we want to see a weight for the entire assembly, there is one thing that we can do, but I don't know if I recommend it, but if you're in a bind, uh, this, this will work. So what we want to do is create a driven assembly off of our primary assembly. And for that, I can go to Properties and make sure that I check the box Treat uh, as part and build materials when used as subassembly. So if this assembly becomes a subassembly and this box is checked, this is going to show up as one individual part instead of a subassembly of many components. And that's what we want, right? We want to treat the whole thing as a part so we can get the entire weight. From here, we can make 
a new assembly. And once I insert this, then uh, we have this as a sub-assembly inside of our assembly. And now we can ensure that it is treated as a part. And just to make sure, right, I can say edit in separate window. We are back into our sub-assembly. And then I can go with uh, properties and, yep, make sure that we have that box checked. Okay, so now that we know that this is being treated as a single part when uh, it is a sub-assembly, I'll go to uh, save this as a new assembly and I'll say something like driven assembly, don't edit so that there's no confusion between which one to edit. Again, this isn't the best practice and this is why I'm not necessarily recommending that we do it this way, but if you're in a bind and you have to get things to work, this is a way to do it. Next. We'll go ahead and uh, send this to a drawing. And once we insert our view, I can pull out my same bag of tricks here and we'll say sheets and views, build materials, right? And we can always save our weights as a template if we'd prefer to do that. But the, the big thing is we have one item here instead of multiple and that means that I can deliver an updating weight just like that. And there we have a single total for the weight of our entire uh, assembly. So it is a one or the other thing because we're not going to have multiple bills of materials in a single drawing. You can get a total, but it's kind of at the sacrifice of the individual list of your parts. But if you're in a bind, that is a way to get an updating total for an entire assembly or which is much more simple uh, for managing your files, for being straightforward and having a bill of materials. You can just have an individual weight for all of your assembly parts. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Libre channel.